Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Do you all remember when I made this puff quilt right here and I came up with a brand new way on how to construct the entire quilt that made things way easier. A total game changer. I am going to construct this puff quilt right behind me in red and white. Just like I did this one. Except I'm going to make the blocks a tad bit larger. Enough talking already, let's get busy. The first thing I did was go through all of my low volume fabric prints. I first checked my scrappier, smaller pieces to make sure that I could use those up first. Then I went into the larger pieces. I even considered this low volume right here. I totally grabbed off of my scrap wall of fame over there for this quilt. I grabbed all of the red smaller pieces first and then I went into the larger pieces of red. I had a six and a half inch ruler so all of my squares up here are six and a half inches square. It's going to be a square puff quilt, 10 across and 10 down. I used my design board and I put it in a checkerboard pattern. Once you get it all on your design board, just how you like it, then it's time to sew all of these squares together, making one whole quilt top. Are you thinking to yourself, that's not how you make a traditional puff quilt? Well, you'd be right. This is the new easy way. Sew them in strips and rows, press to the light, to the dark, press open, do whatever you want. Come on, let's sew all these together. Oh, I know, this machine right here has massive power. If you are loving how powerful my Juki Haruka sewing machine is, be sure to check my affiliate link down in the description box below this video. There are perks to using it. The quilt top is done. In that first puff quilt tutorial, this is the step that I was on when I came up with a new easy way to make a puff quilt. I had a quilt top that was a UFO. I put it up on my design board and I kept staring at it to see what I could possibly do with it. After a couple days, I thought, well, why couldn't I make that quilt top that's just squares into a puff quilt? And that's how it all started. The technique is so simple. If you can pinch a quarter inch, you're golden. You are going to pinch a quarter inch pleat on every single side of each individual block. You don't have to measure though. You're going to do it while you're at the sewing machine. Come on, I'll show you. One ya. tip that I want to give you concerning these outer blocks around the entire quilt. When you go to pinch your quarter inch within here, you still have to account for that quarter inch that's off the end here. So you kind of want to gauge the middle from a quarter inch in and then down to this seam right here. And I guesstimate, I never measured anything on that last quilt, nor am I going to measure anything on this quilt. <laughs> so I'm just being mindful of that and I'm coming down slightly and just pinching. The other thing you want to remember, whichever way you pinch, make sure you do that down the entire line. And I'll show you. The other tip that I can give you is to not break thread right here. You are just going to continue to sew and pleat, sew and pleat all the way down. When you get about a quarter of a way into the next block, the next side of the block, you don't have to worry about a quarter inch on either side. Just guesstimate the middle somewhere pinch it and I'm going to put the pleat toward me. You may want to pinch it when you get up to the corner there with your needle. Totally up to you. you. may be able to get a better look at what the middle would be. And it's okay if you go a little bit more than a quarter inch or a little less. Nobody's going to be able to tell because it's a puff quilt. Now when you get to the end, remember to gauge that quarter inch and gauge where your middle is. Once you have pleated all of the lines going one way, then you're going to turn the quilt and you're going to pleat them all going in the other way. So let me get all these pleated up and I will show you that next. Real quick, I wanted to share with you, when you have one side pleated already, when you go to pinch your quarter inch on this side, Look at how nice that pleats. 
you can literally guide yourself from this first one and then just sew that one down. When you're pinching the edges around the entire quilt, try to only go about an eighth of an inch or so in, because remember, we're going to be sewing things closed there at a quarter inch. Pinch like normal. I've turned the quilt around now because we've already done all of the lines going that way. Now it's time to do the pleats going in the opposite direction. And don't forget to do your edges as well. Grab it somewhere in the middle, pinch it, fold it, and kind of spread it a little bit. And just kind of look at it for just a split second, just to make sure that it's even enough. Here's what the quilt top looks like when all sides of each square has been pinched a quarter inch. It shrinks down quite a bit. Our quilt top is all prepped and ready to go. After this quilt top was completed, it measures approximately 54 to 55 inches square after we have ruched it, so to speak, or pleated it. The best backing for your puff quilt, in my opinion, for this technique anyway, is a minky plush type cuddle fabric. There's a few things that you want to check before you purchase it though. You want the minky that doesn't have a whole lot of stretch to it. It's okay if it has a little bit because we are going to make it a puffy quilt. A puff quilt is really forgiving. So if there is a bit of stretch in your minky or cuddle fabric, no worries, it will work. When you go to a store and have fabric cut for you, this right here is the edge that they cut. When you're at the store and you're looking at all of the plush and the minkies, grab one end of it and give it a tiny pull. And you can see right there how much stretch this actually has in it. You can literally compare them in the store before you even buy them. I would pick the one that had less roll and less stretch to it. Since my quilt top is approximately 55 inches square, I'm going to go ahead and cut about 60 inches square of my minky dot. It does come in about 62 inches wide, so be on the lookout for something like that. Next, you're going to find the flattest surface that you can possibly find wherever you're at. Lay your minky face up. Then take your pleated quilt top and lay that face down on top of the minky. You're going to pull a little bit on every side to make sure that it's perfectly laying nice and flat and even all the way around. Once you have it nice and even all the way around, you're going to grab your basting pins. You're not going to put your pins where you pleated. You're going to put them on the seam because that's the strongest part of this quilt right now. And if you give this a little bit of tug, even though there are pleats within that seam going all the way down, you're still within a very strong seam, unlike this raw edge right here, which is unstable. Since we're going to be sewing these together, make sure that your pins are a bit away from the edge there, at least about a half an inch or more. That way we won't have to take pins out as we sew this quilt top on. The key here, only pin three sides. Here I have one big pocket. This whole edge is not pinned. We're not going to sew that just yet. Next, take this over to the sewing machine and sew one big U shape leaving that one big opening open. Use about a quarter inch seam allowance. Come on, let's do this. This is my whole open end right here. I'm gonna sew this side down first because I'll have less bulk right here within my sewing space. On the corners on the very end where you're going to end and on the very start of it, come in about an inch or so, closing this up a little bit and back stitching really good. And this is our opening right here. Once you have those three edges sewn together, you're going to trim all around just those three edges. Just trim up to where the quilt top is. Slice it off. The next step, find that big opening and you're going to turn it right side out. Some call it birthing the quilt. <laughs> that makes me laugh, I don't know why. <laughs> the other thing that I like to say is turn and burn quilt, but 
I don't know if that's the right term either. So let's just turn it right side out. <laughs> Pinch where the minky and the quilt top meet up and put a bunch of clips all the way around. You can start at the opening side here and start about right here in your top stitching and go all the way around in that entire U shape. Up to this point, we have sewed the top stitch all the way around, leaving that large opening at one end. Now we're just going to lay the bottom of the U shape so it's the opposite end of the opening here on our table. Lay it all out so it's as flat as you can possibly get. I know you can't see the minky on the other side, but trust me, it's flat. And you'll know that if it just doesn't lay right or something looks off. Take some basting pins and along this edge right here, it's the seam where you have sewed these two pieces right here together, this seam. So it's your first seam in the bottom. Skip one pin, skip one pin, skip one pin, and so on. And go every other. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine now, and I'm going to be placing this first underneath my needle. I'm going to stitch in the ditch all the way up three blocks worth, back stitch and stop. I'm gonna do this on all of these on the bottom here. Go up three blocks and sew that. This is the bottom of the puff quilt right here that we just sewed three blocks up. Take out all the pins. Let me show you what the back looks like. Nice, nice, nothing skewed, everything's right on target. Sort of roll your quilt from that opening open. You will need some polyfill. <laughs> Maybe not this much, but you'll need some. I would say grab, I don't know, a handful or so. It's always hard to say how much to put in these pockets, but you gauge for yourself. If you put more, it'll be stiff. If you put less, it'll be more fluid. So what you'll do is you'll put your hand down all of that channel right there. First, you're gonna see about how much you need, spread it out a little bit, and then you can gauge it from there. I'm gonna say I need way more than that, like double, triple that, because my blocks are bigger. Once you get the right amount in there, then you're going to take your hand and squish it and smush it all the way as far as you can to the edge here. Because we are going to be sewing this seam along here and we need that seam area to be totally clear from any puff. Grab some more, shove it down in there. Once that entire bottom row is all filled in, all of the polyfill is shoved all the way to the edge, then it's time to take it to the sewing machine, stitch in the ditch all along that seam right there, encasing those little puffs. Since we've already sewn up two other blocks, then we just bring it back to the puff station, fill them up, sew across again, fill up the next one, and sew across. And then it's time to sew up another three blocks and start the whole process over again. So I've already sewn one seam and I stuffed the second row of puffs. So I will show you me sewing that second row of stitching. When you're at the sewing machine, make sure you put all of your puffs to the left of you. That way you won't get any congestion over here in the throat space of your sewing machine. You only have this right now, but this will soon be gone once we get closer to the end here. You can smash your hand down on the puff on your left side here, so that way it'll help you get a smoother seam. Give you an idea of what it looks like here. Here's my progress so far. I'm getting so excited, it's almost done. Here's a shot of the back right here. Here's the open end still right here that I'm working on, on this side. I've got all of my channels all sewed up and all I have to do is stuff three more rows and sew across and then I get to close it. When you get to the edge here and you're sewing up your channels, this very last block right here at the very end, you need to leave about half an inch or so or a little more open right there. We are going to turn our edge in.
Then what you're going to do is take some Wonder Clips, tuck this back out so that the corners popped out. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the seams and tuck those in. Tuck and tuck and pop a clip. Once this one is clipped, if you go like this and pull it a little, you can see just how much needs to be tucked in there. So I'm all clipped up here at the very edge. Everything is nicely tucked in there. Now we're going to put a top stitch all across that area. Oh my word. I like the larger block better than I do the tinier block. I don't know why, but it's just more puffy goodness. I don't know. Here's the back. It looks just as good as the front. Look at your screen right now. I've handpicked a video just for you if you liked this tutorial. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.